every revolution starts in the minds of the people. Arm yourself for the war of ideas. Take back your life. Take back your liberty. Tom Mullen Talks Freedom. Hello, everyone, and welcome to Tom Mullen Talks Freedom. Thanks very much for checking out the podcast. This will be a short episode that'll give me a chance to introduce myself to you and tell you what the podcast is about. Some of you may be familiar with my writing. I've been writing about politics for the past 14 years. In addition to my blog, Tom Mullen Talks Freedom, my writing's also been featured most recently at the Foundation for Economic Education, but also Newsweek, The Huffington Post, The Washington Times, LewRockwell.com, Real Clear Politics, and a number of other nationally known publications. Back in 2012, I covered the Republican National Convention for the Washington Times, focusing on the Ron Paul campaign. And after that, I had a blog on Huffington Post, now HuffPo, for a number of years. I've also ghostwritten several books, including two that made number one on the New York Times bestseller list and three more that were in the top ten. Of course, wherever my writing has appeared, it's always been from a hardcore libertarian perspective. Fourteen years ago, I was what we call a minarchist, believing in a very limited government that exists solely to protect our natural rights, very much in the John Locke and Thomas Jefferson tradition. But it didn't take me very long to move to where I am now, which is a believer in more of a system like Murray Rothbard described in his 1971 treatise, For New Liberty. In addition to over 500 articles over the last 14 years, I've also written two books, A Return to Common Sense, Reawakening Liberty and the Inhabitants of America, and my latest book, Where Do Conservatives and Liberals Come From? and Whatever Happened to Life, Liberty, and the Pursuit of Happiness. And it's really that book that defines my mission with the podcast and, and with my future writing. We've become a society that is increasingly polarized into two political tribes and, and two ways of looking at the world, both of which, I argue, are antithetical to the principles upon which these United States were founded. Imperfect as they may have been, the United States were founded on libertarian ideals and remain probably the most libertarian society in history for many, many decades. The libertarian idea was the dominant view, and that was reflected in Thomas Jefferson's first inaugural when he said that the government's job was to keep us from injuring each other and otherwise leave us free. That is the libertarian non-aggression principle. It's at the center of the philosophy, and now so few people hold that view. Well, if the last almost two years have taught us anything, there are no limits to where the government will go if we let it. And this show is really for all those people who know something is wrong, but they can't really put their finger on what it is. They know that this can't possibly be right to lock people in their homes for extended periods of time, close businesses, force people to get a vaccine they may not want, and the efficacy of which has at least been called into question. But once you get down to the nitty-gritty of what's right and wrong here, it, it can become confusing. Do people have the right to refuse a vaccine or resist lockdowns or mask mandates if that's going to increase the risk to other people? These are the kinds of questions we're going to sort through on the show, but we're not going to be focusing on merely philosophical questions. Contrary to popular belief, libertarians are not utopians. We're very practical. And the question that really needs to be asked is, is the government the solution to this problem? I mean, let's take a look at the track record here. A lot of people are horrified, and, and rightly so, that the government just spent 20 years and trillions of dollars, not to mention thousands of American lives and hundreds of thousands of foreign lives, on a war in Afghanistan that achieved nothing. It really is quite shocking, but I guess my message is to you, this is nothing new. We've had a war on drugs for 50 years. At the end of that 50 years, the government declared an opioid epidemic. Now, those are the government's own words to describe the results of its 50-year war on drugs. We've had the Department of Education for 40 years. How is that done? Is anyone happy with the state of education in our country today? How about the war on poverty? 
also 50 years old. This is the same organization that we now apparently are going to allow to make our medical decisions for us. This is not reason. At this point, how could any rational person believe that 20 years from now, the government's management of COVID-19 is going to look any better than Afghanistan or the war on drugs looks today? And I'm sorry, it's just not reasonable to believe that voting somebody else in who will bark the right orders this time is going to make things any better. So if there's one thing I hope the podcast can achieve, it's to shake this faith, this religious faith in government that seems to have gripped most of the population. Maybe you won't become an anarchist like me, at least not right away, but if I could at least get you to question the idea that sending another $30 billion to the Department of Education or the Department of Defense is a good idea, well, then I guess I'll have done my job. In any case, I can promise you you'll get a perspective on this show that you won't get from ABC, NBC, CNN, Fox, or any of the rest. So please subscribe to the podcast on the podcast platform of your choice, and make sure you get over to TomMullenTalksFreedom.com and sign up on my email list. I know you'll enjoy the email updates and You'll have access to free ebooks and lots of other perks. So again, that's TomMullenTalksFreedom.com. Subscribe to the email list, and I'll see you on the next episode of Tom Mullen Talks Freedom. Thanks for listening. The war of ideas has only just begun. Arm yourself with the knowledge you need by heading to TomMullenTalksFreedom.com and subscribing to our email list. And remember, every revolution starts in the minds of the people.